Hello and welcome to Easy Finance. Today we cover the story of John Steinhessen and his ascension to power in the Democratic Alliance, one of South Africa's most prominent political parties. John Steinhessen's rise to power is marked by a blend of strategic maneuvers, internal party dynamics, and controversial decisions that have both shaped his career and the trajectory of DA. In this video, we'll delve into the behind-the-scenes conflicts, the alliance forged and broken, and the contentious moments that have defined his leadership. Join us as we uncover the complex and often turbulent journey of John Steinhessen, shedding light on the shadows that accompany his climb in South Africa's political landscape. This video is only for educational purposes. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video while you're at it. John Steinhessen was born on the 25th of March 1976 in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. He is a South African politician who has served the nation in various capacities. He is currently the leader of opposition and federal leader of the Democratic Alliance, a position he has held since 2019 after the removal of Musi Maimane. Now, the role of any opposition in any democracy is to keep the government on its toes. This was a role which was well played by the Democratic Alliance and parties like the EFF. As a prominent member of the Democratic Alliance, Steinhessen has grown through the ranks to become the leader of the party, which is now the second largest party in South Africa. Now, Steinhessen's journey into the political arena started at a very young age. As a young boy growing up in the community of Devon, John Steinhessen had a passion for making his society better. He joined many non-profit organizations such as Rotorek, but found that their efforts were often hampered by the authorities. This is when he decided to get into a position where he could influence the actions of the decision makers. Now, at the age of 19, John Steinhessen joined the Democratic Alliance, fueled by their vision of making lives better for all South Africans. He started as an activist for the party. Now, the young man often used bicycles to deliver the party's election pamphlets from door to door. This helped the party to gain more seats and by 1999, a then 22-year-old John Steinhessen decided to contest for a seat in the Durban City Council. He won the election as the councillor for the Durban North and made history as the youngest municipal councillor at that time. Steinhessen spent about eight years as a city councillor, during which he made an impact in several areas, including fixing the numerous potholes on the roads. Now, as a young rising star, he was elected to serve on the city's executive committee and in his party, he was appointed as a caucus leader. Now, after several years of impactful service as a councillor, Steinhessen decided to up the ante by seeking an election of the KwaZulu-Natal National Regional Legislature in 2009. He succeeded in this and the next two years saw him excel once more, exposing corruption in high places of government. Now, the year 2010 would come with a scandal that would ordinarily end any politician's career, but John Steinhessen managed to hang in there. It was discovered that John Steinhessen was having an affair with a 24-year-old who was the provincial spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. But he disappointed all of those who were already writing his political obituary as he went on to retain his seat and get elected into the National Assembly in 2011. He retains his post to date and has made a name for himself with his take-no-prisoner style of debating, which he has helped widen his party's influence in the parliament and keep the ruling ANC on their toes. Now, serving variously on Rules Committee and the Joint Standing Committee on Financial Management of Parliament, many see John Steinhessen as an incredible intelligent person who couldn't have come this far if not for his natural love for the rough and tumble of politics. While making his way from the regional to national parliaments, John Steinhessen maintained an active presence in the political party. By 2014, he was appointed Chief Whip of the DA in the national parliament. He held this position for five years before taking over as the party's parliamentary leader. His position as DA's parliamentary leader only lasted for a short period before John was elected as the party's overall interim leader in 2019 November. Now one year down the line, he was elected as the party leader permanently. His election marked the culmination of all the efforts Steinhessen had put into the Democratic Alliance since his boyhood. He gave a very impassioned acceptance speech in which he restated the party's vision to truly returning to power. Although Steinhessen has survived several scandals in the course of his career, but one that he cannot seem to shake is the controversy over the fact that he does not have a university degree. The DA leader completed his secondary school education and matriculated from Northwood Boys High School in 1993. He then enrolled at the University of South Africa to study politics and law in 1994. According to Steen Hazen, he studied at the University of South Africa for three years, during which he received several certificates of merit 
with distinctions in politics 1, 2 and 3 and internal politics. However, he never got his degree as he dropped out due to financial difficulties. Now upon dropping out, John Stenison largely focused on his political career. He later carved out time to undertake several courses at the London School of Economics, which spans South Africa economic development, leadership, municipal finance and legislative drafting. Now according to him, much of the theories he learned in the university have not come in handy in his political career. What he found helpful is his focused education on key topics and on the job training. The above explanations are quite sound, but the fact remains that John Stenhazen has no university degree, but just a mere matriculation certificate, and this has brought him sharp criticisms over the years. The issue first appeared around 2009 and 2010, while he was in the KwaZulu-Natal Regional Legislature. It once more grabbed headlines again in 2020, when he indicated his willingness to run for the DA leader, with many people pointing out that Stenhazen is a beneficiary of white privilege. According to them, Stenhazen would not have come this far without a university degree if he was black. This school of thought was also peeved that he defeated black people who had higher educational qualifications during the election. Now John Stenhazen has refused to bow to these arguments. According to him, he has been quite truthful about his educational background and has never lied about what certificates he has. Now, South Africa remains a society where issues such as race and class are still very divisive and Stenhazen's party has a reputation as a white middle class party, something that won't attract black voters anytime soon. Currently, the Democratic Alliance is involved in a government of national unity with the South Africa's most prominent party, the African National Congress. Many voters have shown displeasure over the African National Congress favoring the Democratic Alliance over other progressive parties such as Umkonto Esizwe and the Economic Freedom Fighters. Now to add an injury to an insult is that the Democratic Alliance wrote a letter to the ANC President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa instructing him on which ministries he should appoint to the Democratic Alliance. It's indicated in the letter that they want overall control over the departments and non-interference from the government. This means that they, even the president would not have the power to remove any of their ministers if he found them not to be doing their work. The ANC has since fired back and sent a letter to the Democratic Alliance accusing them of wanting to establish a parallel government. If the demands of the Democratic Alliance in the government of national unity are met, we could see John Steinhazen rising to become South Africa's deputy president. This could be a milestone in John Stenhazen's career as he rises to power. Please let us know under the comment section if you think John Stenhazen would make a better deputy president of South Africa and let us know what you think about the, the Democratic Alliance and the Government of National Unity under the comment section. Remember that this video was only for education.